Great. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so excited to be here today and to be joined with these colleagues and friends. And guess what? We are going to talk about story on Family Search. We're going to talk about some things that happen behind the scenes. These three people work in engineering. They're going to give us some information that I think you'll find so interesting because story, as we understand it, is something that it's information that you either experience or discover or find out about yourself or your family that gives you sort of context. It helps you anchor and see how you belong. And this is what we all love doing. And I've had the opportunity to work with these three and I've hand selected them to come share with you today, family search and our perspective on story. So I'm thrilled to start the conversation. And I think at the very beginning, I would love for you three to, to tell us a little bit about what it is you do around story at family search and be prepared to give us the inside scoop into all the things that are coming up. We have a new feature that we're going to give you a look at, and we're going to talk about some personal stories. So welcome. Welcome to our story panel with Grant, Mike, and Courtney. So Grant, why don't you go first and tell us what it is you do at Family Search and why story is important. Um, I work on the design of, of FamilySearch.org. I've been working there for about 17 years now. And story is really important. It's, it's the basis of even the family tree. When we were designing the family tree, we did a lot with pictures and other things to say, how do we represent the story of a life? And it's still continuing to roll out, but it's been a pleasure to see that and see that throughout the world. So 17 years. So you have been around for a long time at Family Search, and so many changes have happened. Um, I'm excited to, to kind of get more and understand more about that. Okay, Courtney, tell yeah. us who you are and what you do and why story. Okay, so I'm Courtney Connolly, a product manager for Family Search. I've been with Family Search for about eight years now, and I recently switched from product marketing to product management, and I'm loving it. I get to work with these amazing teams of engineers, designers to create experiences to help people discover their families. And we have a new experience that's coming out really soon that's all focused on story and getting to know your ancestor. Yes, and you're going to show it to us later. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, this is awesome. Mike, talk to us. So thanks for having me today, Wendy. I, I'm excited to talk about story because I've been here about seven years in January. And since I arrived, it's been all about story for me. My first assignment was with My Family Booklet, which was all about gathering stories from mm -hmm families, what they know, the, the stories that families actually already know. And so from day one, I've been focused on what story means. And what I found as I've traveled all over, actually, is that story is universal. Story is the thing that connects families and that, you know, a lot of family history is kind of scary for people, but story is something that appeals to everyone. So I, I, I'm excited to talk about that. Okay, that was so tweetable. Uh, it's universal. It appeals to everybody. And we all love to engage in story. So welcome, welcome. Um, let's talk a little bit about how, like, how do we conduct research to kind of understand, we would say, our patron or our customer. Um, and, and I think it's helpful. I think it's really interesting to know what types of research we do. Grant, I'm going to send it to you. Will you take that question first? You bet. Um, it's one of the things that is the most, most rewarding for me is sitting down and visiting with people in their own location, in their homes, or, uh, uh, you know, where, where they'll bring to us and show us the things that they've gathered over their life and they're meaningful to them. And sometimes it's just a picture or two because that's all they have in their, their home that has very few things in it. Uh, sometimes it's those pictures on the wall even though the glass is cracked. So it's, it's watching or going and observing them and then having them tell their stories and tell us what's important to them. And I find that to be a very rewarding part of that research, mm -hmm. being out there. And then also just hearing people and seeing what they share on Family Search and hearing about it. Oh, and I, I love that you talked about going into their home because I think um, something that um, Mike and Grant specifically have done is they've gone and met with people like, like Grant talked about and they come back to Family Search and bring their stories back. 
and they share pictures and they talk about what they've learned. So it sort of spreads throughout the entire organization. And that's really powerful. There was a project that we were working on before pandemic. And there was this huge whiteboard that was covered with pictures of people who had been interviewed from all over the world. And it, it was powerful and amazing. So Grant, thank you for that. Um, I think it's awesome to think about how global family search is. Okay, Courtney, what, what kinds of research have you seen or experienced around um, understanding story and our customers? Yeah, I've been involved in research um, to understand our users, our patrons' needs, motivations, their desires, their intent, their goals. And then we digest that and incorporate that to our messaging when I was in product marketing and now the experience now in product management. And one thing we found is that people really want to feel like they belong to something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important, especially this year, a lot of people feel alone, they feel lonely. But by discovering their family stories, they belong to a bigger family, something greater than themselves. It helps them feel less lonely and more connected. Oh, I love that, less lonely. We all need to feel a little less lonely and story, story can do that. As Mike talked about the universal appeal. Okay, Mike, talk to us a little bit about what research has looked like for you. Yeah, like Grant talked about, what we really try to do is get into people's homes and their environment and understand you know, how, how story and family history kind of affects them personally, right? And then how, how it shows up in their lives and what they want to do with it, right? So, for example, I remember one family we visited, um, I think it was in Trinidad, where we went into the home and there was this father and his uh, daughter, and she had this collection of all these trophies on the wall, right? And she also had this room full of stuffed animals, right? And the dad like proudly uh, displayed these things out in the open so that she could tell her story, right? Because he knew that that was important to her, mm. right? So just understanding like how those little things show up in people's lives is really important to us. And then when we come back, we bring information, we bring those stories, we bring the pictures, we bring um, the way that they want to see stories showing up in their lives back to our product management team. And that's where it starts showing up in the product because our job as researchers is to bring the kinds of information back that will give empathy to mm -hmm. the product manager so that they have empathy for what the users are trying to do. So in, not just in terms of the task, but also actually in terms of using the product, right? Mm -hmm. so if we see people struggling with the interface, right? We take video of that and we show product managers like the faces of people using the product when they're frustrated or when they're happy because we want them to know what resonates, right? So that, that's part of what we do as part of that process. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. And so that's really interesting to know the extent of the research and the global sort of reach of family search. And this year we've released a ton of new languages. How many languages is family search available in? 30, 31 right now. 31. Yeah. We've gone over the 30 mark and we're still plowing ahead. <laughs> that 30, 31, then there's more parts, parts are in more than that picture. This is fantastic. And I just, I think there's something that I want people to understand about the three of you is, um, and, the, and our colleagues at Family Search is what you, you described is also a way that it helps us sort of love our, our patron and understand, not just understand, but really love. And something that's powerful too with story is, is listening. And we're actually talking about that in, in another panel called Powerful Listening, but I think that's key. So today we're talking about story, on family search, but we want to remind you that listening is also really, really important. Yes, Mike. Can I share one thing about that? Please. So one of the things that we heard a couple of years ago from users directly, we had this uh, focus group that was a group of women that were giving us feedback about how they could use the product with their children. And, and Wendy, you participated in that, yes. right? You were helping us moderate some mm -hmm. of that. But one of the things that we heard from one mom was she really wanted to be able to put audio recordings on video in family search, right? So we brought that back to the memories team and really quickly, like inside of a year, that feature was available in family search. That's just one example of how users really can, their input really does affect the product positively. And mm -hmm. we're grateful for our users and all the feedback that they give us. Yes, I love that. And, and on each, like on a lot of the pages, there's a, at the bottom, like there's a um, give feedback button, right? Am I speaking correctly, guys? And so we love 
we'd love to hear from you. And let's talk, Courtney. Okay, let's talk about this new feature that is going to be available about around story. And this is a product of so many people's work and, and research and all of those things. So let's hear about it. Okay, let's see, I'll share my screen here. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so we are so excited about this experience because it takes some of the best discovery experiences on our site as well as new experiences and puts them all in one page for a specific ancestor. And each of these sections on this page tell a part of that ancestor story. It builds the story of each piece on this page. So this first section here is the life summary of this person. And what's really exciting about this section is the system takes the data for this person and automatically creates a story for this person. So a patron didn't go in and create this story. The system created the story based on all the amazing data for the ancestor in the tree. So that's really exciting. That's something new that will be on this page. We have the photos, the memories of this person. This will include the audio that Mike was talking about. This will include stories, photos. This all tells you so much about this person and helps you get to know them. Then we have this section that has different personalized discovery experiences mm. specifically for this ancestor. And that again, tells you more of their story, who they are, what happened in their life. This is a visual look at the family timeline. So you can see like when people lived, when they passed away. So visually glancing at this, you know when the parents, siblings, when they lived and how they may have interacted. Then we've got the family information, the spouse and children information. So this is a simple look at the pedigree for this person. And then again, thinking of story, this is a story highlight, and this shows the most popular, most viewed story for this ancestor. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. So many different, yeah, so many different things that tell you about this story, tell you about this person and their story and their life. We have a name and meaning section that goes over what their name means, first and last name and the possible spellings and what that can mean. And their parents and siblings information, sources, People love this section because it validates information that's here on this page and helps you get to know them. There's, you can learn so many stories about someone from, from their records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love, love records. You can see their signatures, exciting things like that. And this world events section, this will tell you what happened in their lifetime, what happened in the area that they lived in their lifetime. That can tell you so much about what they may have experienced, mm -hmm. what their life may have looked like. Yeah, and then if people don't have an account, they can go ahead and create a free account and learn even more and then share this with their family and friends. So we're really excited about this experience because it's digestible from our research and our user testing. People want easy digestible information that they can share with their family and friends. So that's why we have this experience so that they can learn their story, digest it easily, quickly and share it with their family and friends. Wow, it's like you're bringing the best of like information from all sorts of different teams. How many teams in engineering did you work with to pull something like this off? Like, give us, give us some there insight. There are so many people. It's amazing how much work happens behind the scenes to make things like this happen. Mm -hmm. um, five teams, at least, for different aspects of the back end. Yeah, so design it, to build it. So many different teams and individuals are involved to make this happen. And how many, so you said this is Ancestor Pages, how many will be yeah. available like once this feature launches? So we will have an index where you can find these pages through an index, or you can also search for them on Google or other search engines. There's also a lot of work being done so that they're more easily findable through search engines. Mm -hmm. And there on the index, there will be about 60 million. Oh. Wow. So a lot of people, <laughs> we're trying to include those that are searched for most often so that way you can find your people on this mm -hmm. index and this page. And if you think of all the people that contribute to family search from um, people who are record custodians who give us rights to indexers, to individual patrons who are uploading photos, who are attaching sources, this is really a family project. So everyone who is watching this know that you have participated and have contributed to make this possible. So we should all be celebrating. Like yeah. this is exciting. And this is something that we hope people will be able to experience and really find connection. Like you talked about Courtney feeling less lonely. And then these stories, you can share them and, and have conversations around them. Okay. So I have to ask this question. <laughs> um, how does family search 
engineering, because I'm not in engineering, how do you decide what experiences, features to build? Is this, is this a topic any one of you feels like you want to answer? Grant? <laughs> well, a lot, of, a lot of that research that we did earlier, mm -hmm. we talked about earlier, you know, we, we see what resonates with people. Mm -hmm. And then we try and develop a prototype or other things, test it with people and see, and then also just see where it fits in with things. Mm -hmm. you know, like early on, I can say we talked, we had pictures and photos in early on in prototypes, but first we had to get it more and more records accessible because that made the experience better for more people. So it mm -hmm. builds on, builds on things. So sometimes it feels like it goes a little slow, but yeah. a lot of that is the building, right? Because right trying to get it to work throughout the world to get all those images and records uh, may not be your part of the world right now, but it's, we're doing it in some part of the world right, right now. And it takes a lot of time and effort to get all those things together. So it's, there's this step-by-step -step part to, to get things to work. Mm -hmm. So we had to get everybody contributing before we could make it. So it's easy to search via Google right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think in the 17 years you've been there, it's probably really powerful to see an experience like the one that Courtney shared because you've seen and been there for a lot of those building blocks. And right. now this is 60 million opportunities, you know, for people to find a connection, which like we should be eating cake. I mean, this is really exciting. <laughs> um, Mike or Courtney, do either of you want to tackle the how does family search decide what to build question? I'll just add to what Grant said that with all this research, it's all about identifying the needs, problems, motivations of our patrons, and then developing experiences based on that. So this page in itself is built on the research and having it digestible, easy to find, shareable. So this is all built on that research. So we build experiences based on the research. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to uh, add? I want to just comment on that, sure, is that um, one of the things I really appreciate about the organization is that our, you know, our leaders are really very focused on user intent and user experience, right? They, so our, our job role technically is being renamed as experience managers because they want us to be thinking about user experiences, right? Mm -hmm. In the industry, we might be called product managers, but we, we, are, we, we are experience managers because we need to think about that. So, um, and because of that, what happens is they, they look at overall strategic priorities. Like right now, this, this last year story is a big deal <laughs> for the whole organization, right? So they're really having us think very much about stories and what the journeys are that users take through those stories. They have a team dedicated to understanding that journey map, mm -hmm. for storytelling in families. And then, like Grant said, we get sent out to understand what users want to do with stories, what their intent is, and then we respond to the intent. So there's kind of a, there's some top down, there's some bottom up, but there's a, a happy meeting in the middle from my perspective. And I think this is a happy meeting in the middle um, <laughs> because I, you know, continue to learn and be inspired by the three of you on both, both a personal and professional level. And I think it's interesting for people to know um, that inside family search, there are some really deep connections that go beyond um, work colleagues because we have an opportunity every day to sit in a space where we try to understand how to connect people, as Courtney talked about, through the universal piece of story, as um, Mike talked about, and through the opportunity that Grant described sitting in someone's home. So it is an honor and a pleasure um, to, to kind of hold the space with the world. So I think that's something we all appreciate. And as we wrap up, I would love for you guys to share a little bit maybe about a story that you've discovered that's been impactful for you um, as we talk a little bit about why is story so important to family search? And I think we've kind of answered that, but why is it so important to you? Um, Grant, let's go to you first because you're right next to me. Will you okay. share with us a personal story that is powerful? Okay. Um, this one is just one of my favorites. Uh, oh, shows up. It's, uh, oh, this is a picture of my, my grandmother. And uh, I always was intrigued by this picture. You know, this is in 1920. Those are bear cubs. That's amazing. Those, <laughs> yeah, those are bear cubs. And you can just... And they're real. They're real. <laughs> And you can see the smile on my grandmother's face, right? Which this takes me back because, you know, when I was born, my grandmother was uh, 
near near 60. So, you know, she was always my grandmother, older. Mm -hmm. But when I look at this picture, I realize that she was once a young girl and, and uh, I, I loved this picture. And then I, I was talking about it one, one time to one of my uncles and he said, yeah, did you know that grandpa brought, brought those to her while he was dating her? So, um, you know, I think wow, about, uh, so I think about flowers versus, you know, baby cubs. Bears. Um, so it's just uh, that connection of being able to have that story, being able to share that with my kids and, and others about uh, connecting to somebody that, you know, has, is uh, now gone has been a helpful thing and helping us to take back to a different time, a time when this part of Arizona was a big wilderness and it was a long ways to the trains and all those type of things, mm. a very different time. So mm -hmm. it's just, I, that's one of the ones and the connection with my you know, uncles and aunts when asked about those pictures and the details that would come back from their, them that gave me a, a feeling for their life. Mm. It, it, a story is a chance to really explore and connect with each other. And it can be something simple like this. I mean, this photo is pretty epic actually, um, but it can, it can elicit meaningful conversation, which in the research, we know that, right? And yes. I like how you said this kind of humanizes her or helps you see her at a different you know, time in her life. And we know from interviewing people that they love to see their ancestors at the same age that they are, because it does help right. with the connection. Yes. I love that. Okay, um, let's see, Courtney, share with us one of your favorite stories. I, my family stories bring me so much strength and inspiration. I even have some of my photos, my favorite family photos on my wall to remind me of their examples. One of my favorite stories, um, my ancestor, Suzanne Avedor, she came from England all by herself to America. And she writes about how her family thought she was crazy. Like, why are you doing this? But she just wanted to, she felt like she should. And she ended up building a career for herself as a doctor in, in Nevada and would ride her horse around the neighborhoods, the different towns to help people as a doctor. And I'm not a doctor, but I gained so much inspiration from her example, her independence, her boldness, and just her strength. I hope I have some of that from her in me. Yeah. I love that. And I, I also appreciate how you talk about the traits right? The traits that she has and understanding. And I would invite everyone also participating. If you haven't um, watched any of the getting started story track classes, we have a lot of content around helping you tell your story. So people can then discover these things that Grant and Courtney are talking about, about yourself. So getting a, a look at someone else's story is so powerful as is documenting and sharing your own story. Uh, okay. And sorry, related to that is just that resilience, right? You see somebody yes. that went through hard times, um, you know, in Courtney's case, that challenge that she had. Uh, my grandmother's case, you know, it was, it was a similar thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. all of a sudden takes you back and say, wait, oh, when they got their first car, they traded horses for it, right? And they had, you know, to go through the snow for the birth of the child. Grandpa had to go you know, with the snow hitting the, the horse in the chest to get the midwife or the doctor, those type of things. But they just, it gives us understanding that our challenges, we have challenges. Mm -hmm. Others had challenges. They made it through. We can make it through. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I love that. That's another reason why story is so important. It grounds us and connects us and reminds us that everything is going to be okay. <laughs> um, Mike, bring it home with your st a favorite story that has impacted you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share a little screen here. Are you seeing, hold on, where did it go? There it is, you see that? Yes. Yep. Great, so uh, this is a story uh, about my dad he was a farm boy out in the middle of South Dakota, and he tells the story of this isn't, these are just pictures I found uh, that kind of represent what he did. But he was driving a tractor as a 10 year old on his, on his family farm. <laughs> and um, Wendy, Wendy talked about, Wendy, you talked about that kids like hearing stories about people in their family when they were their age, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I have a son, Pete, that's in the lower left or lower right corner there. 
that, you know, looks very much like my dad did when he was 10. And that's the photo above him, right? So when Pete heard this story, he was totally engaged about it because imagine driving a tractor by yourself out on the farm, right? <laughs> so he's out driving out on the farm and ahead of him in the field, he sees a nest of duck eggs. Mm. And he's worried about destroying the nest of duck eggs, right? Well, his so he goes to pull the clutch to disengage the the harrow so that it doesn't destroy the eggs. But his father, I guess there was a problem with it. So he had wired the clutch um, so that it wouldn't disengage easily. And my dad pulled so hard on that clutch to try to disengage it that he ended up he ended up pulling himself off the tractor and was dangling by that clutch between the tractor, you know next to the tractor and almost fell down and then would have been raked over. So at the very last minute, he used all his strength and weight and pulled and disengaged the clutch and stopped the tractor, right? So again, imagine a 10 year old mm -hmm. going through that and imagine my son listening to a, his a story about his grandfather who had been through this experience, right? Those are the kinds of things that people really, that attract, like what we found in our research is like Grant's picture showed Kids love stories about animals. So the bear cubs, big hit. Duck eggs, big hit, right? And then they also love stories where they can re somehow relate to someone. They, they can see them differently than they saw before. So now he's looking at grandpa through different eyes, right? And then that last thing is just that there's, there's a little thing in there that's so wildly different from Pete's own experience that it's just going to capture his imagination, mm -hmm. right? My, the end of the story is my dad says when he went home and told his mother, she went back and, and talked to his father and said, no more 10-year-olds on the tractor. <laughs> no more 10-year-olds <laughs> on right? the tractor. So That's why. Mom knows best, right? And, and uh, again, just the, it's a great story about the event, but also what happened afterwards and um, just the role of mom in the family. So builds empathy, builds understanding, creates connection between generations. And that's what story is all about. And I, I love too how um, the duck eggs are these like precious things that um, that are worth risking his 10 year old self for. And yeah. I think that there's a gentleness there that is exemplified by that, which I think probably, you know, is something that feels really also connective because we're all tender and understanding and connecting to that part of us, I think is powerful. Right. This has been a pleasure to chat with you three about storytelling, building storytelling opportunities on Family Search. And um, for people who have participated, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think. And however, we've asked you to give us comments or feedback. Make sure and watch additional um, uh, classes about story. We have tons of them. We also have lots of opportunities for you to, to record and document your own story. So we invite you into the storytelling family of Family Search. And um, that's what we've got to say. Do you guys have anything else to say before we end? No, thanks. Good luck in your you. journey. Yes, keep going. Tell your story. Find find someone um, that you can share your story with and just see how it really does build connection. Okay, thank you.